Well, hello and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset Podcast. As you well know, at this point, I didn't upload any podcast episodes in the month of December. So we are coming into January strong. It was completely unplanned. I I didn't anticipate doing all of that. I got sick and I got way sicker than I have been in many years, many, many years. And I just couldn't, I just, I just couldn't record. I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. I was that sick. I was so sick that I needed antibiotics and not only did I need antibiotics, but I, the first set or the first round of antibiotics I had didn't work. I had to upgrade to an even stronger antibiotic. And I'm not the kind of person that runs to the doctor for everything. I, I just don't do it. But I, I feel very strongly that stress was a huge contributing factor to how sick I got. And even in that, once I accepted that the first week of December, I wasn't going to be able to post a podcast, I, in my head, was like beating myself up. And something clicked in me one day, and I, I just told myself to let it go. Just let it go. I feel so strongly that stress was a huge underlying factor in why I got so incredibly sick. And the fact that I was stressing about not having podcast to post was not helping (laughs) at all. So long story short, I decided to just let go. And I said, no podcast for the month of December. Um, I will continue to work when I am well enough to continue to work. And podcasts will resume in the new year. And so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> now that I got that out of the way and that that explanation that I have been waiting to tell you guys for so long, we have tons of incredible guests lined up. Today I decided because of the explanation I wanted to do a quick uh, solo episode for you and something that has just been weighing really really heavy on me and I actually once I started getting better, I did um, a live video on Facebook and Instagram, and I talked about this. But and and in the moment, I felt better talking about it. But for some reason, it's still weighing really heavy on me uh, because I don't I don't know that my audiences overlap between you know Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, the podcast. Maybe they do, and maybe they don't. So. Maybe you've heard this, but probably you haven't heard me say this. And because it is just so weighing on me, I wanted to talk about it again and really put it out there. And I feel like there are going to be some people who are not happy with me saying this, but I so wholeheartedly feel that this is true and am very passionate about it that I, I have to speak my truth, and that is what a platform like this allows me to do. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. So I have had multiple people contact me about dog training in the past couple of months, and uh, for similar issues, for similar the, a similar reason. And then I was confronted with this firsthand in a manner that I, I didn't feel I could speak up 
um, because it wasn't, I, it wasn't in a professional capacity. I wasn't in a professional capacity at the time. And, um, even though I talked to my husband about, about it and I was like this, I don't, and he agreed. He was like, let's not get involved. Um, because we weren't asked to get, I wasn't asked to get involved. Um, but there is a huge issue that I am seeing and I have been seeing, but I've just recently been so it's like thrown in my face consistently lately. Teaching children how to appropriately interact with animals and not just teaching your children because they're, you know, you have a child that from the time they are born until they start understanding things well enough, I mean, you, you have a good couple of years where you also have to be on top of managing interactions between your child and your pet in so far as you should never, ever, ever leave a child and a pet alone. I don't care how good, quote unquote, you think that animal is, that dog or that cat, I, I, it doesn't matter. There is no instance where a dog or a cat and a child should be left alone. And even once that child is old enough to start understanding and you're starting to teach them how to appropriately interact with an animal, you still should never leave them alone because you have no idea what that child is going to do. So first and foremost is, you know, people contact me and they're like, I need to make sure that my dog isn't going to snap at the baby. Well, okay, we can work with your dog to a degree, but more than anything, it is your responsibility not to leave that baby alone with that dog. It's your responsibility to make sure that that baby is not inappropriately interacting with the dog. People post videos on social media and they think it's funny or cute because a toddler is walking on a dog or, you know, throwing their hands in the face of a dog or pulling the cat's tail. None of this is appropriate or funny. And it is abuse. Like, I understand there, okay, there are different levels of abuse. I get that. Like, we're not legitimately, you know, torturing this animal, but it is still abuse nonetheless. The way that we appropriately interact with animals and pets in the home. Yes, absolutely. Has to be taught to a child once they are old enough to start to understand what you're saying. And, and you know, when you have a toddler, they're exploring the world with their hands. And if you're watching the video, I'm like, you know, moving my hands all around. They are touching everything. They're exploring the world with their hands. So it is 100% your responsibility to make sure that your pet is protected and not subject to that abuse. And people may not be happy with me saying that, but it is the hands down truth as I know it. And I also want to say that it is, you know, these two concepts of teaching your child how to appropriately interact with animals and being the protector and advocate for your pet to make sure they are not suffering the abuse from your child. These two things are not mutually exclusive. They both have to be happening always at the same time. They are both your responsibility. So while, yes, we can use positive reinforcement to whether that is with toys or treats or playing to, you know, create positive associations for your dog or your cat when your child is in the vicinity, in the room, so they're not scared of the child. We can absolutely use positive reinforcement to make sure that, you know, coexisting is peaceful between an animal and a child. At the same time, as a parent, it's your responsibility to 
if your child is not of the age to start learning how to appropriately interact with your animal to protect your animal and keep your child away from them so that they are not you know, hitting on your dog or your cat or pulling their fur or putting their hands in your dog's face um, or your cat's face. This is, you, you know, I, I, I kind of made the analogy from if you think about as people age, uh, we get less tolerant of things we were once very tolerant of. So if you think about, you know, a grandparent or a great aunt or uncle, and as they're getting older, you know, it can be that, you know, haha, everybody is joking, you know, oh, grandma doesn't hold her tongue anymore, right? She says what's on her mind. Well, yeah, because when we're younger, we tend to put up with a lot more stuff. We tolerate things that we don't really want to. And as we get older, we're like, yeah, I'm done with that. I'm done. I'm not tolerating this anymore, right? The same thing happens with our animals. So if you think about somebody saying, oh my gosh, my dog was so great with the kids for so long and, you know, years we did wonderful and my dog was so good, quote unquote, so good. Um, and then one day my dog just snapped. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Your dog was tolerating abuse until there came a point where he could no longer tolerate it. He had, or she, had given you all of the warning signs. They, you know, they growled. They gave you the whites of their eyes, uh, which we often call whale eyes, because that is them saying, I am very uncomfortable. This is a situation I'm not happy in. They're, you know, grinning and baring their teeth. They're growling. They're doing all of the things because they don't want to bite. They don't want to nip. They don't, whatever you call it. And I understand that people may call it different things depending on the severity, um, you know, a warning bite, whatever it is, that your dog doesn't want to do that. They have been warning you for years that this behavior is not okay. And they get to a point where they can literally no longer tolerate it and they snap and they, they bite. Now, Really quickly, I want to go back to this quote unquote, such a good dog or such a good cat, right? People say this all the time when really what they're saying is my dog is tolerating the abuse my children or my child or my children are giving them and I'm not stepping in to do anything about it. That's what that means. When I hear that, when I hear somebody say, oh, my dog is so good with the kids, to me, you're saying you are not stepping in to the situation, doing what you're supposed to be doing to protect your dog, doing what you're supposed to be doing to teach your children, and your dog is tolerating their abuse. Guess what? We can only tolerate abuse for so long, and it is inevitable. Like anybody listening or if if this is triggering you, I look, I want to apologize. I don't want to trigger anyone. What I my goal is, is to make people think, really think about how these interactions are going between your children and your pets. Really think, are you providing the the absolute best uh, possible scenario for setting both your children and your pets up for success. If you are allowing your child or children to abuse your pet, you are absolutely not setting either one of them up for success. You're setting them both up to fail because what is ultimately going to happen one day, it may be tomorrow, it may be in three years, I don't know. Every dog is different and the level of abuse is different. Um, but at some point, in some form or fashion, your dog is going to snap. Now, maybe for some dogs that they're going to just retreat into themselves and get really depressed and hide, not want to be involved, not want to be out with the family. And that is incredibly sad in itself. They just don't know what else to do, right? Because they have been abused for so long. Other dogs are going to snap. They're going to bite. They're going to continue growling until they, they're they like, why is nobody paying attention to the fact that this is not okay? I'm telling you this is not okay. Nobody's doing anything about it. I guess I'm going to have to step up my game, and they're going to bite. 
either situation is incredibly sad. Unfortunately, at the point where a dog bites, you're blaming the dog. This is victim blaming. <laughs> I mean, literally the epitome of victim blaming. You have been allowing the abuse of your dog for God knows how long. They finally stand up for themselves and then you blame them for doing so. So yeah, this is really, really heavy on my heart. And the absolute best thing we can do is understand that this is not appropriate, that teaching your child how to appro appropriately interact with, with pets and protecting your dog from being abused, these two things are not mutually exclusive. They ha both have to be done at the same time. And you know what? If that looks like you put the baby gate up and the baby and the dog just are not interacting with each other most of the time, well, guess what? That may be the absolute best thing for them. And, and every situation is different, right? I don't know what's going on in your household. I don't know, you know, the environmental circumstances, the emotional circumstances, the physical circumstances. I don't know. So I can't say for sure, but absolutely not allowing your dog or your cat to be subject to abuse is mandatory. Also, teaching your child how to appropriately interact with animals, mandatory. Whether, even if you don't have a pet in your home, your child is going to interact with someone's pet someday. <laughs> and teaching them appropriate interactions is so important. So that's my rant. I will now get off my soapbox, but I feel very strongly about this, if you can't tell. Um, and quite unfortunately, like I, I had a similar conversation with someone the other day who is in my neighborhood who contacted me and I pretty that, you know, she's pregnant and she's concerned when the baby comes because the dog is, has sensitive areas on the body that they don't like to be touched and they will snap if they get touched in those areas. And I said, first and foremost, we need to take care of your dog because it sounds like, you know, this physical pain we need to address. So we talked about that a little bit. And then I said, 100% when that baby arrives, it is your responsibility to make sure that any interactions between your child and your dog are 100% um, on your terms. You are there. You are in between. You, you are not letting your child go up to, you know, once they get to the point where they're crawling, you're not allowing your dog to walk or crawl over, excuse me, you're, did I say that right? You're not allowing your child to crawl or walk over to your dog where you, you're you not um, observing what's going on and right there in between them to make sure everything is going okay. It is 100% your responsibility to make sure that interactions between your dog and your child are positive. Simple enough right? And she's like, uh, I was afraid of that. Literally, that's what she said, how she said it. Like, yeah, I mean, how, what, what else is supposed to happen? Or is your dog magically supposed to become a nanny? Like, does your dog turn into Mary Poppins? I, I don't understand what people think. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting on my rant again, and I don't want to do that. So, <sighs> Both of these things have to happen. We have to teach our children respect for animals, responsibility and caring for animals once they're old enough, and boundaries of what and how they can interact with animals. And this is not just with animals, but this, because this show is about animals and pets, these are the three, we have to teach this to our children. Meanwhile, providing positive interactions for our dog or our cat when our children are around so that our dog or our cat or whatever pet you have sees your child as something positive, associates them with something they already know to be positive, food, toys, treats, play, petting, all the things that are positive for your pet. All of these things are true. None of them are mutually exclusive. 
They all have to happen together. So, okay. So I realize that one, I may sound a little bit different. And if you're watching the video, I look, I'm dressed differently because I decided to come back and record a little bit extra for this podcast because the more I thought about it, I thought, okay, I'm ranting about what not to do. I need to give you what to do. So the, there are, it's more than just don't run up to a dog, right? Like <laughs> there's so many more things that we need to be teaching our children and how to appropriately interact with dogs. By the way, this also 100% applies to cats or any other animal uh, in or around your home or anyone else's home. Uh, first and foremost, pet only neck to butt. So we never want our children to pet a dog or a cat on the top of the head. Uh, two, do not approach the dog when they're eating. Uh, do not approach the dog if they have a toy. Do not approach the dog if they are chewing on something. Uh, no kissing or hugging the dog or the cat. Again, all of these apply to any animal in your home. Don't pull on any part of the dog, the animal, no ear, don't pull on the ears, don't pull on their tail, don't pull on their skin, on their fur, um, don't pull on their, you know, legs, feet, none of that, don't pull on them. No sitting on, laying on, or riding the dog. I can't tell you how many of these I've seen on social media. I don't know why people think this is cute. It is not cute. Um, but these are all things we need to actively be teaching our children how to appropriately interact with animals. Do not put your face in the dog's face. Do not go face to face with a dog. This is something that I see a lot of adults doing too. This is something we shouldn't be doing, by the way. Um, do not pick up the dog. I don't care how small the dog is. Do not pick up the dog. Do not touch or step on the dog's paws. Again, I'm just going to keep saying this also true with our cats. Do not poke the dog in the nose or the eyes. I don't know how anyone would think this is okay, but this is something we have to teach our children. Do not hit, kick, or throw things at the dog. Again, this is something I see happening far too often, especially on social media, because I'm, I just don't surround myself with people that, you know, have children. I I don't have a child. So it, it's one of those things that when you have a young child, you tend to hang out with animal. <laughs> Look at me. You tend to hang out with other people that have young children. When you have teenagers, you tend to hang out with other people that have teenagers. When you don't have a child in the home, then it's a lot harder to find friends. But that's a topic for an, another podcast. Um, also, do not yell at the dog and don't yell in the vicinity of the dog. First, we should be teaching our children not to yell, by the way. <laughs> Like, period. It's not pleasant. We don't want to be in an environment um, with anyone that is yelling. And it's not even like, well, adults can yell. No, you know what? It's it's an inappropriate way to communicate. Um, I, you know, yelling, I understand it happens to the best of us. I am as guilty as the rest, uh, but it is not an appropriate way to communicate. So all of these things I'm giving you need to be taught actively to our children. Um, and in doing so, what, what I want to say about this, by the way, I, I, these are all do nots. Do not, do not, do not. We actually don't learn in negatives. Our dogs don't learn in negatives. Our cats don't learn in negatives. We as humans do not learn in negatives. What I mean is instead of saying, no, don't do that. Instead, we show them appropriate ways to interact. So if your child or someone's child that you happen to be around is trying to pet a dog and put their hands on the dog's face, you know, muzzle, top of the head, wherever, we need to instruct them how to appropriately pet the dog. So instead of saying, no, don't do that, we say, this is how you, this is the right way to do it. And we show them how to pet the dog on their back. So these are, again, as an adult, I'm giving you these lists of no, don't do this. And it is then up to you to take that and translate it uh, for your child or any child that you may be working with, how to appropriately do something. Because again, we don't learn in negatives. We learn in positives. So don't say no, say do this instead. With that, now we can end the podcast. <laughs> with that, I'm going to end today's episode. Thank you so much for hanging out and talking with me or listening to me today. Um, I can't wait for all of the incredible interviews coming up on the podcast. Also, if you haven't already checked out 
my new podcast, Pet Health Junkies. I hope you do so. Make sure to check out the petparentingreset.com. And uh, if you need to reach out to me for any reason, you can do so on uh, at the website or on, on social media. And check out PetHealthJunkies.com as well because there are some freebies there for you from myself, Pam, and Janet. So with that, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here with me. I can't wait to hear your reactions to today's episode because... I really kind of went off on a rant. And uh, until next week, give your pets some extra love from me. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives, too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos in my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.